The following program makes use of copywritten material as part of a psychological examination of music. All music copyrights remain property of their respected creators. If you are looking for a pure understanding of the music scene in Huntsville, or if you would just like to consume a few tasty beverages at an ideal price, 12th Street Bar is the perfect solution for anyone wanting to experience quality nightlife in the Ville. It really is as simple as class without having to spend quite as much cash for superior as well as familiar drinks. One of the best attributes to this sort of bar and venue, in my opinion, is the specials. And since my night off is usually on Saturday, I usually always get a Long Island iced tea for only $4. 12th Street's open mic is usually set up on the last Tuesday of every month, and you can catch live shows on Saturdays. If they don't have anyone booked, they usually have karaoke as well as every other night throughout the week. Now, the Gypsy Davies, their last show will be on Friday, the December 16th from 9 to 2, releasing their first album and selling merch for their trip to Los Angeles. Toll Street Bar is located at 1024 12th Street from 4 to 2, Monday through Friday, and 6 to 2 on weekends. 12th Street Bar, it really is the place you'd rather be. Hey, hey, Convo Sapiens. Today, we are talking about one of the most powerful metal bands that I can even think of, Kill Switch Engage. Now, this was a listener-requested band requested by one of my childhood friends, Thomas Shepard, which I've only known as TJ, despite his Facebook profile name. And I would just like to say that this was a great choice, considering the connection that both Nico and myself have to this band, considering some of the song covers and how many times we've actually jammed these songs together. I definitely want to encourage all of you to post what band or artist you guys would want us to do an episode on, on our uh, Facebook page. Uh, before we get started, uh, I just want to mention again that we've got, we still have t-shirts available at only $15.00. Bumper stickers at $3 and our circle stickers at a dollar. They're a little bit more pricey if you go to our webpage, but if you contact us by messaging us, especially if you live in Huntsville, then we can uh, make it a lot easier and give you those uh, prices that I just quoted. So uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and start the episode with uh, Welcome to the Conversationalist. Let's talk. Sick during one of our shows? Yeah. When? Um, a few times playing at Lizards. Do you remember which one, though? No. No? No, I just played through it. I would have never been able to know. No. Well, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> but usually I try to sing from my diaphragm, so it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, like, it does have an effect on the vocals, but should still be able to hit the notes. Right. I I, I just wouldn't have known because I, I didn't I never heard you be like put your <coughs> you know Yeah, yeah. anything like that. Put your cup in the air. <coughs> For the listeners, I apologize. I'm sick, so I'm going to be coughing a whole hell of a lot today. Right. But uh today, man, we're going to talk about one of the most metalist of metal bands. By the way, that was a direct quote on what someone called our band back in the day. Hey man, the most metalist of a metal bands. To, a good way to turn it, turn it around, and put it on us. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Uh, no man, we're gonna talk some uh, kill switch and gauge. You know, you say metal. I say it's one of the most powerful bands I've ever oh, yeah, listened yeah. to. Yeah, well, I think that's where because their style of music in general is very unique because of how much they take from like the metal world with their riffs or right. whatever, but then they go kind of into, like, the hardcore hardcore world with, like, their rhythms and their breakdowns and then their overall, like, 
Yeah. Kind of. Well, I mean, if you want to get you know? as technical as you can, they kind of go right under the metal core. I think that. Yeah, I, th- I think that was a very appropriate. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, a title for this sort of uh, band, even though you know, it always comes tricky whenever you you discover a band and you're like, well, what are they? You yeah, know, you don't know what to, what to label them as, which labels are the bitch of it anyway. It's like, why even Absolutely. bother labeling something? Just accept it. That's what it is. But you hear this band, and it's like, well, they're heavy, but they got this edge to them, so they're kind of hardcore. And it's like the reference that yeah. it's like the reference that we heard the, the lead singer of uh, Shadows Fall once say is like, you have your chocolate and your peanut butter. You got your metal and you got your hardcore. And you just sort of like not <laughs> wanting to mix them together, but for them it worked. You know, right, like, right, right. Um. I mean, at the same time, man, you know, you've got so many different bands that want to follow the that, you know, multiple genre thing. You know, yeah. They want to find something new, but they like we've talked about before, like you can either say, well, you know, you just listen to it and see if you like it, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. or you can be like, no, nah, man, this is grind porno. Yeah. You know, soft, uh, soft core, porn uh, core. Uh, yeah. Uh, po- <laughs> pre post. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pop punk type shit yeah yeah but i think for a single <laughs> title you know metalcore yeah sounds pretty good I but think, i think so but th- see also i was thinking about this there's a band called him his infernal majesty with yes. villa Valo singing and everything and the way that he describes his music is love metal mm-hmm. but i think if anything is love metal it's fucking Kill Switch Engage. Okay, well, I think I think it depends on the era of Kill Switch Engage where it gets love metal. Because if you go back to the very beginning, okay, okay, before we go into any of this, because I don't I don't want to jump ahead before we get behind. We'll go we'll, we'll go back. We'll to go this. back. We're gonna forget, dude. No, no, no. Just put we're a gonna, put a fucking... put a marker on your notes for this. Just write love metal. I don't know how to write, dude. Anyways, uh, before we go into thing, let's do what we always do. Uh, when did you first discover Kill Switch? Wait, we didn't even do the fucking clinky, man. You want to go all the way? My drink's over there. Fuck it. That's okay. Whenever I got into Kill Switch, <laughs> um, I'd say the first time I've ever really listened to Kill Switch is probably much later than whenever it, it hit. Mm-hmm. Um, I was listening to like the Freddy vs. Jason soundtrack or the uh, uh, MTV Headbangers Ball yeah. uh, CDs, and uh, they always had like a song from Kill Switch. Mm-hmm. This is some of the earlier stuff, usually. Yeah, right. So, I mean, it was... Uh, I didn't really pick it up at first. Right. Not at all. Do you remember you know? the songs? Uh, I want to say uh, Fixation on Darkness. Fixation on the Darkness. Yeah, and uh, When Darkness Falls. Oh, okay. Um, were, were they with... Well, so, When Darkness Falls was when Howard was in it, so... Uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. So was it the the Howard version of Fixation on the Darkness, or was it? The, wait, no, I don't think they recorded that version. Uh. Well, no, they 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 did, but and they released it yeah. on Alive or Just Breathing, like the special version. So you know what? I don't know which version it was. Okay, then. Okay. Uh, but but it, I think it may have been Howard singing it. Okay. Um. So, but you're saying you didn't really get into it at first. No, no, Was there no, anything first. about it that was like... No, you know, honestly, it was just another one of the songs on the compilation. Yeah. You know, the compilation itself was a great album. You know what I mean? The Freddy vs. Jason and the Headbangers Ball. So, I'd listen to it all the time, but entirety as a compilation. And I really wouldn't separate too much track for track. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, definitely good feel of both of those albums. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, obviously... Kill Switch, whenever you... There's a certain time in my life, I think, Kill Switch really stood out as, like, a big band that I was yeah. into. And, you know, it was sort of like those young, like, 16, 17-year-old, like, discovering metal kind of moments for right. me. You know, metal really wasn't, like, that big in my life until a little bit later on. Right, right. You know, because back then it was always, like, alternative stuff, hip-hop stuff, right. pop stuff. It was, like, a little bit of everything. But there was, yeah. a, there was a time period where it was just, like, straightforward, all-in-all metal. And yeah. this was this was uh, big in the uh, music downloading era of LimeWire oh, and right. Frost, but whatever the Frost one was, yeah. uh, Frostwire, Frostwire, like all those those uh, those websites that you could download music for free. And shame on us for doing that, but we're not perfect. No shame. I, you know, as no fucking shame. Hey, man, as as a hopeful, you know, uh, artist that'll make money off of my music one day. I'm gonna download your music. I'm gonna for free. I'm gonna give you a really big uh, talking to you about doing that. I'm gonna I'm and, gonna spread it too. And by doing that, I'll be like, John, what the hell? 
That's as far as it'll go. I'll be like, that's typical John. <laughs> but anyways. It's just me. Uh, this being the, the big time for that that sort of thing. Uh, I remember someone suggesting listening. No, I think it was like the Resident Evil soundtrack where End of Heartache. I, th- I believe End of Heartache was on that was one. Was it? I think so. I'd have probably listened to that too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that song came on. And I, and I think it was the friends that I was hanging out with. Yeah. They were like, hey, check out this song. Check out this band. And I heard it, and I was like, this is a cool song. I really enjoy it. So I was like, I want to discover more from this band. So I discovered more, you know, download random songs. And then it wasn't just them. It was like I want to discover more about this genre or, like, this style of metal. Yeah. So yeah, you download a lot of In Flames, Shadows Fall, uh, All That Remains, Soil Work, uh, you know, like, all like these metal bands that, you know, that – like not just metal, but like speedy, like fast right, right, metal. Right. And like, well, it was a, it was a, I wouldn't say it was it was a after new metal. Yeah, yeah, it was, and it was uh, so it's weird to say newer metal. Yeah, new new metal, new new metal. <laughs> um, and it, it, it's really not so much new metal because when you think new metal, you think like a fucking samples and DJ board and shit. Yeah, a little bit of hip hop. Yeah, just somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, aside from like Slipknot, but right. um, this was more of the whenever punk came together a little bit more with yeah. metal. And like I was like I would um was gonna say, like metal has always been in my life, but always in subtlety. Right. You know, I've never really been so far into metal that I know everything from Megadeth or, you know, yeah, anything yeah, yeah. like that. Cause, you know, I mean I've got I've got my boundary of too heavy and, and uh with this band, um it's always kind of been right there on the boundary. Yeah. Because you've got your screams which you can only get whenever you're into it yeah you know if you're not in the metal world you're not really going to enjoy that part yeah i don't know how many times people i've ever heard people say i just can't get into it he's right. just screaming way right. too much like you, you legitimately with this kind of music you have to wean your ear to that yeah you know and i'm not saying that it's bad for that or that's a terrible thing because when you do get into it, it you're hearing things that you couldn't hear before yeah because it sounds messy but now when you're getting into it you hear uh not just anger or animosity but you you hear like different you know parts of it it's just it's hard to explain it's just a dynamic that you feel Right, you know, it's 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 a it's a little little bit of flair that it, it adds to. I like, think maybe it, it's like just that the little extra bit of emotion, that like just to, to amplify the the piece that it's in a little bit more. You know, like right. if you feel like that, that it's because you could sing the entire way and you could do a a, a great great deal of uh, you know impact uh, to the song. You, I mean, you don't have to scream in a song for it to be powerful, right. but then once you add that to it, it's sort of like it digs a little bit deeper. Yeah, and, you know, it, it gives us just the teensy. Teen but if bit if you can hold on to the screams, as soon as you get to that chorus with with any of the vocalists, mm-hmm. any of the vocalists, it's got this beautiful, powerful, soaring voice that's yeah. just so it's soulful. Yeah, you know, more so than Howard. I'd right, say. right. Um, um, and I think that's something about Kill Switch that makes people really enjoy them is just that dynamic of yeah, they're they're they got their screaming stuff. They got two Which, pages. Yeah, they have their intense moment. And, and okay, if you want to break down what makes Kill Switch, okay, they got their they got their intense stuff. The oh, screaming, yeah. the guitars, the dead, 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 you know, real technical stuff. Real the, technical. The drums, technical as fuck. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, I think the drums really make Kill Switch, in my opinion. Uh, and I'm not just saying that, being be a drummer, but I think right. without some of the things that the drummer is doing, you know, it just wouldn't. I don't think it would have the same effect. That's just my personal. You know, opinion. I just have to say that. And drums are heavily influenced in, in, in what I'm about to say, but I think it it has to do with, like, the tightness and the sound quality that is, that is what makes Kill Switch because they're doing so much oh, yeah, definitely. to get all of that so clean, so clear, and exactly what they want out of it. Yeah. It takes hardcore musicians, like, great musicians to do any of that shit. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, two of them, two of the members, which we'll obviously we'll talk about the members of this band, two of them... Uh, you got Adam D and you got Joel. Yeah. Uh, to my knowledge, they both went to the School of Music in Berkeley. Did not know that. Yeah, uh, which is one of those. It's like in, you know Whiplash, that school that yeah, the kid yeah. goes to, and it's like the most pristine not, music not, school. Not my tempo. Yeah, not my tempo. 
uh, it's kind of like that where it's like the real good school of music that you want to go to to aspire to like hopefully play in like bands or whatever. Right. And I I, I think Joel studied guitar. Yeah. Which is why I think he's such an underrated, phenomenal uh, guitar player. And I believe Adam D studied stand up bass. Ooh. So I don't know how that incorporates to his style because well, I think I, he's an amazing guitar player as well. And you know what? I mean, Adam Adam D has jumped around. Yeah, I think yeah, I think he started he's a, on drums. He's a fantastic musician, is what I mean right. to say, because he can do the drums. I'm sure he could do the bass. He could do guitar very well. He could sing pretty well. Yeah. Whenever he's serious, because a lot of times he sticks his mouth on the microphone and you don't know what's gonna come out. Which is something we'll talk about a little right, bit later. Right. But whenever you hear him sing like a good chorus and it's on point, right? Adam D is a personality. He sure band. is. He really is. <coughs> um, it's kind of difficult with this podcast on this on the specific band, just because there's so much to say and not <laughs> yeah not a really great way to throw all this information at you at once, right? Um, um, if there was a if you were to go to a Kill Switch show. You would obviously you would be entertained by the music, but I guarantee there'd probably be like those few fans that only wanted to go to the show just to see what Adam D was going to do that night. Oh man, what he was going to be dressed up as, if he was going to be in short shorts Superhero, and a, and a yeah. cape, or if he was going to have a like a luchador mask on, or if he was going to have the horns or right. or whatever. And then and after that, you see him like he he leaves playing music to just jump around and right. skip around all over stage and mess with people. Right. And and see Kill Kill Switch switched up the whole game on metal. Yeah. And I think most of this is due to Adam D. Really? Um just the whole um <coughs> metal beforehand was always gloomy, negative, uh So serious. So serious, you know, uh I, I don't know if it was In Flames or another band that said, you know, we have a rule never smile on oh, stage. Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. it's just don't do it, you know, cuz it is not representing your style or their style or whatever. Kill Switch, on the other hand, they fuck with each other. Yeah, they yeah. have fun. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, they're like what you'd see, you know, like on, you know, like demo videos of like corn or something like that. You yeah, know, yeah. just everybody's fucking around, you know, like when you yeah. don't usually see them on stage, they're playing, you right. know, most, most of these uh, bands, but they bring it to the stage and that's a lot of what makes them fun. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's something I've always talked about whenever you see a band you're seeing your heroes. You're seeing these people that you look up to. You, right. you know that you see this band that you follow for years and years, and then you finally get the opportunity to see them, and then bam, there they are. Right. You, you sort of idolize them. You turn them into the golden gods, and you you all you can think about is how cool these people are. Right. You know, I think, but I think with Kill Switch is that they kind of bring that. You know, we're the same as you. You know, we're fans of music. You know, like we're like if if we saw like our heroes, like we would just be like you. We'd be like just. You know, ecstatic and crazy yeah. to see them. So, I think they kind of bring that. Um, I don't know, just that that relatability as far as like these are people up here that are just doing what they love and playing the music that they love, and it's all about having fun. It's not so much about being stone cold face, you know, serious metal all the whole time. Yeah, stone cold Steve Austin. Hell yeah. yeah. Anyways, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess, man, just starting to go into their music. Um, but yeah, no. What I, what I wanted to finish saying was that uh, when I was uh, listening to all all this style of music, it really kind of put me into like that metal, like a metalhead, men, you know, mentality yeah. of like uh, in this, flames. Yeah, like this is the music that I listen to. Like if you went through my, which is funny, I remember finding an old iPod and like connecting it up to a sound system at our old uh, band practice. This is way after you had left, but uh, connecting it to like the big speaker and listening yeah. to music. And like discovering music that I was listening to back then. At this right. point, it was probably like maybe three or four years after that. So I was right. listening to like the music that I listen to nowadays, like kind of more trippier. Chill, type stuff. yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I was like, "Holy shit!" I was listening to this, and oh, you know, like all this yeah, like yeah. speed blast beats type stuff. And like, oh my gosh, yeah. was I angry and back then? Switch has that too. Oh yeah, man. yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of the things, man. You know, also thinking back about like the first times I listened to uh, Kill Switch because we only went from whenever I first heard it wasn't into it. You yeah, know? I think it was mostly hanging out with like you and Charles and Reed. Yeah, um, that really kind of brought me into that. And when we started playing some Kill Switch, you know, yeah, and, yeah, we sure. Or we we sure as hell tried playing. Uh... We well, we did Rose of Sharon <laughs> at our first show we've ever done. Yeah, I still say tried because. Uh... Yeah, well, well, we, I think it, we did it, it was, another time too, didn't we? Yeah, we 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 played it twice. We played it at our, our very first show at your thing, 
and I think me and Gary learned how to play it. I don't know how much Reed learned how to play it. Right. But uh, still, it was like our first time playing anything in that style, right. like that metal, because our stuff was like alternative hard rock, but it wasn't on like that brink of metal. Did you, I also did the guitars and, and sang it on that song, too. Did you? Yeah. I, I, I did the... Dun, 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 okay. dun, 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 but I didn't do the... Um, it's like... Dun, 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 dun. But I didn't do the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah, oh that's, yeah. That's way too intense for me, man. Right, right, right. Um, I'll, I'll play it all the time, and I'll just kind of skip that part. That's kind of <laughs> what I mean by like we tried. It was yeah. like, you know, uh, but pretty sure Gary could, Bear, Gary was doing it though. Oh yeah, shit, dude. We were staying up all night oh, trying yeah. to learn that song, and uh, I remember this was at the point where Gary was like, he was like, I can, I can learn it. So he would try and learn it by ear. And he couldn't get something, and so he had to like sort of swallow his pride. It's like, all right, look up videos on YouTube. Like, how are these guys playing it? And, yeah, you know. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I know, but that, that's just a funny story about Gary. Like, <laughs> I can do it. I can do it. I don't need a fucking video. I can do it. And then, fine, put the video. Right, in. Let's look it up. Don't tell yeah, anyone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we played it, and I still remember it's during the dun 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 that part. Where I think like there's maybe like there was like a note or two like we were missing because like every time we would like go into like the second half of that it was sort of like are we on are we on is this right and then kind of having to yeah, adjust yeah. from there, um, but then the second time we played it was when we had Nikolai with us on guitar so we right. had two guitar players so we were able to play it right and I believe that was our very last show that we played that one oh wow I believe so uh, and I remember Gary always doing a listen. Uh, we may not play this song good, okay, but fuck it, we're gonna do it anyways. <laughs> was he, uh, was he drunk at that point? I don't know. Cause he would, he would drink during the show. It, 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 He'd no, still be alright to play. No, it's not like he was, like, talking crazy talk. It's like, oh, but he did. No, well, no, for that song. <laughs> I, I, okay, you're okay. defending him, like, way too much. I'm telling you, like, he knew, like, we kinda couldn't get the music down for that. You know, right, just cause right. you're singing. You could sing the song. Or you could try to sing however you want to think about it. But, like, with the music, it was like, we were still kind of always iffy. Like, are we on? Or are we right? You know? Yeah, yeah. The music spectrum was like, we were, like, always questioning. Like, do we got it? Do we? Uh, right. You know? Uh, once, but once we got past the that one part, it was clear sailing. You yeah. know? Because like, everything past that part is, is, is was a breeze for us. Um, but still, like, those were, like, the two times. And every time we played it, it was like, shit, I don't, I, we probably didn't play it that great of it. You know? Yeah. But it was still fun. It was still fun to uh, to try playing their songs because this, this was a band that we looked up to, right? You know, just like how we played Deftone songs because like they were a song that we really really oh, looked yeah. up to. So that was the kind of style we <laughs> wanted to play. Definitely, yeah. You know? uh, who we aspired to be like at the time, I think the most. We've also tried other songs from Kill Switch as well, like in our practice. Yeah, we played know? a uh, back when Jackie was with us. I remember we jammed out "End of Heartache" a few times, okay. and that was really fun. Uh, then I think we tried playing Desperate Times once. Yeah. Um, other than that. Oh, My, oh, curse. my curse. Yeah, we, we, curse. I remember uh, Gary has a fun story. Like, he learned how to play that song through Guitar Hero. Yeah. Like, like he was just, I don't know how he figured it out, but he said, you know, we want to know how I learned how to play this song? Guitar Hero. I was like, <laughs> that game actually is effective? That wor- I mean, I never figured, but I guess if it works... Wow. And uh, I remember we were at, where were the fuck? I think we were at Franz's Bait House, because I yeah. think that's where we were practicing at the time. And uh, he starts playing it, and I was like, holy shit, that's the song. And I never played the song before, but I've heard the song a billion times. Yeah. So immediately, I was like, I knew exactly what to do on the drums, and we fucking rocked that shit. And uh, I don't I think, think you knew the words exactly, so I wrote them, well, out, yeah, yeah. I wrote them out for you. And uh, I remember I was writing out the screams, so I was like... <laughs> I was spelling out R A A A A A A, you know, ra, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it helped me. I'm sure it did. Just so you had a good reference of. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that was probably the times when we wrote Razor Blade. That no, well, you we wrote Razor Blade a long time ago. But at the bait, bait shop. But we 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 brought it back. Right, right, at the right. Bait shop. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, totally different story. Um, so yeah, we were we definitely were uh, heavily influenced by this band. We played their songs. We listened to all their songs. Uh, well, there's probably an album that I'll get to. Where I'll tell a pretty deep story, but uh, let's go to the very top, very beginning of their their uh, their journey. Uh, their self titled, the very first self titled album that came out with in 2000. Uh, it's very interesting uh, introduction of this band because it was because they had their singer, their first singer, original singer uh, Jesse Leach. Jesse, yeah, and. <coughs> 
I kind of feel the same about Jesse that I feel about like uh, like Jonathan Davis, where like you feel something in his screams, you feel something in his right. words that feels like it's coming from that place. Right. You know, I'm sure if you were to dive deep into his story, uh, there's a there's a great band that I wish Gary was here we could relate to. It was a, a band called Flaw. Right. And uh, lead singer, he has a real troubled childhood. Like his mom killed killed herself, and oh, wow. she was a singing she was a singer, and he looked up to her as a singer, and then. You know, then she did that, and then he went up and started his own band. And you hear his voice just sort of like crumble while he's singing, and like with these screams and his, his words, like you know, that's all. You know exactly oh, yeah. where that's coming from. I wonder if you do her to do that with Jesse, if you were to find like maybe something happened, or you know. Well, I just know he struggled with a lot of depression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was also very introverted. Oh yeah, like and he, you can kind of tell that when you if you ever see interviews whenever, with them. Whenever they went on tour, he'd stay in the back, and they didn't have a bus. They they just had. A van and uh, uh, a trailer. That's the way you're supposed to do it, kids. Anyways. Right, right. Well, he would just sit in the back of the van next to fucking um, jars of piss, you know, just because he did not want to leave where he was at. You know, he didn't want to talk to anybody, mess yeah. with anybody. He'd do the show and then he'd leave. He wouldn't talk to anybody. Yeah. He he suggests that he was a, he was a big douchebag in those days. Yeah, yeah. You know, just kind of an asshole, but... Uh, that's kind of a crazy thing when you look at this life of music. It's like yeah. you either it's so, someone said you either love it or or it's either you love it or you don't do it. Right. You know what I mean? Cause and like, that was said in the documentary we watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill Switch. Uh, and you, it, that, that's absolutely true, man. I mean, because you're you're going away from home, you're sort of leaving right. your life behind. To, yeah, he was married at that time. Yeah, too, to and you're leaving his this wife behind. You know, crazy circus act that you call music, and it's like yeah, either you're the type of person that. You're okay with being gone, and right. you're okay with the adventure. You're the person that that all you could think about is that life that you left behind to do right. this, and it's like, oh my gosh, it's well, like the the combination of uh, not enough technique as a vocalist. He was just belting what he does. You know what I mean? He was he didn't really know what he was doing, right? And the combination of not knowing what he's doing and the depression, you know, caused him to blow out his voice, and yeah. then like the next few shows that week, he'd. He'd just have to fucking work through it, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? So, yeah. I mean, that's only going to add to the depression that he already had. Uh, yeah, I could totally see that, man. It's, it's it's That's that's a whole lot of, like, just shame that you're just throwing on yourself, yeah. man. Like, I, I, I could definitely see that. Right, that's right. That's crazy. I mean, that, that was the case with uh, Jesse, man. Yeah. You know? He had, to, he had to find his way on his own. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, we're kind of jumping towards the ends of his thing, man. Let's kind of, let's go back to what it was he was doing. Uh, but the self-titled album, uh, very like when I say metal, like all I can remember from this album is just a lot of da, 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 you know like a lot of like it's very driving. Right, right, right. Very, very driving. And I think they had a different drummer than Justin Foley, who is we'll, we'll get no, to. No, it was Adam second. D. Was oh yeah, that's right. The first album was Adam, Adam D. Um, so it, it's it's good. It's it does the right stuff. I remember there's a lot of, you know, a lot of good double bass moves and everything like mm -hmm. that, and it was very, very intense. But I just remember, like, my ears going straight for the guitars. Right. Feeling that, just that drive, which is what I like. And I think that's a lot of things in... It's one of the things in, in metal that I think people like the most, is whenever you go... You think about metal, you think about the guitars, you think about the licks, you think about all the riffs and all the solos and stuff like that. When it comes to, like, their technical stuff, I think... With it being their first album, I don't think they're they're being too flashy, but I think they're showing, <coughs> you know, their 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 what they can do. You know what I mean? Right. Well, most of that was Joel on the cars. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, Joel is one of those that are underrated because you know Adam D's in people's fucking face. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's out there. You know, he'll do like a he'll do a squeal, and and you can see on his face whenever he does a squeal, he's just like, yeah, all right. And then Adam D does a squeal, and he's like, I don't. What the fuck did I just do? <laughs> right, right, you know? right. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I think, and that's part of the, something that I, I guess I like a lot about Joel. I, I, I like both of these guitar players. I like Joel right. and Adam D. Right. Who I like more, it depends on the song. Yeah. Um, but I like I like Joel because he's very like, I don't know, he's, he's just very fluid with like his guitar playing, where it just feels like it's just coming natural. You know right. what I mean? Like it just seems so smooth. Like, you know, because I think he has such a great knowledge of his instrument. Oh, yeah. He understands his instrument really well. To where, if you're, I, I remember watching a, a video of him like. Uh, like a tutorial on how to play one of their songs and most people is like okay 
you're going to play this chord, and then you're going to do this one, this one. Him, he's like, okay, we're going to go to B minor diminished, and then we're going to go to A minor, you know, da da da, like, like all like these like explained out chords right. and everything like that. And it's like he knows exactly the notes and the everything right. about his instrument. Um, so listening to like all of like the technical stuff that he was doing on here with like all the the the, the riffs and everything like that. I think he was. Inf- I, I, I was glad if if he was the only. Was it him? Because there was another second guitar player for Pete. A lo- yeah, Pete. But only for like a maybe a year <laughs> or two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not, it, not very long at all. If he was, if if Joel was only doing the guitars in this album, I would have said that really showcased who he was as a guitarist. Right. You know what I mean? And then uh, uh, Jesse, obviously, like like I was saying before, with his intense screaming. I, they kind of do the dynamic that we're talking about with like the heavy screams and then like the big soaring moments, but it was very subtle. Like yeah. they didn't really unleash it until the next album. So this one was just like a full on like metal album. Right. <coughs> it was. Well, this is the album before they got signed too. Yeah. So they did this on their own um, and <coughs> they had it available right after their first show. Their first show they did with... Uh, they opened up for In Flames, Shadows Fall, and Dark Tranquility. That sounds that's, like a metal That's right a there. good first show. Right. Especially considering those are like the bands that they are closest related to. Yeah, and what I want to say about this is that it's really cool that this band itself like really shaped itself because of its scene, because right. of like people knowing each other. Right. It's kind of like what you would really wish out of Huntsville. Right. You know what well, I mean? Well, you it was know, like- and also the band members <laughs> would flush between them. They, you know, the bands that... Killswitch came from was Overcast and Aftershock. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was just everybody was fluidly finding their way, who they yeah. need to be with as a, as a band, you know. Yeah. And I, I would have loved to have grown up in that scene, even though I'm not really into much hardcore. Yeah. You know, I think that, you know, if I did grow up around it, I'd be a little bit more. I think I would just love knowing, like, okay, there's all these bands going around in this one, sp- in the scene. Right. And they're all friends. And right. And it's sort of like... Hey, you want to come? You know, stand in for right, uh, right. for somebody. <coughs> Pardon me. And then you realize, hey, this guy really works well with us. You know, right. On a smaller scale, Huntsville <laughs> does have that. The only problem is, is we don't have a one scene. Yeah, no, it's, it's like it's too fucking it's, diverse. It's, it's it's way diverse, which is a great thing to experience yeah, yeah, as yeah. a listener. It, it has its, it has its pros to it. Absolutely. Um, it's just if you're a musician, you don't get a lot of uh, you know that whole you know, shuffling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which might be a good thing, too. I you suppose. Know? I don't know. I would I would like to live in a place where it was just like that community, you know, right. towards that scene. Anyways. Uh, after the first, um, after that uh, first album and the first show or whatever, um, uh, D'Angelo, uh, Mike, I believe, Mike D'Angelo Mike was D. Uh, contacted uh, from Roadrunner Records, one of the guys you know, who was interested for like, you know, six months trying to get them on. They weren't ready to make that decision um, yet because they were like, well, what did, what does this record label really want from us? Are they going to fuck us over? You know, what's this about? You know, eventually they settled through just because it's Roadrunner. Yeah. Every other label that's ever messed with them, they just kind of, you know, all the smaller ones they just kind of put under the table, but they knew that Roadrunner had the resources. Right. You know, so they eventually took that and, that's where we go to our next album. Right. Uh, Alive or Just Breathing, uh, which to me was a fan-fucking-tastic album. I really love this album. Uh, not my favorite, but I still really love it. There's more than one song on here that I really listen, I love yeah. and I, I could listen to over and over and over again. Absolutely. Which by the, uh, Some of the first songs I ever bought off iTunes, I think, were off of this album. Uh, Self-Revolution, My Last Serenade, Last Serenade excuse me, uh, The Element of One. With- Fixation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like Fixation. I like the Howard version a little bit more, but yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, without a name, which without a name is like one of the like the most interesting songs of Out of Kill Switch because it's their first instrumental song that they ever did, right? And it's like acoustic, and it's really truly beautiful, right? Like not in the like I'm not trying to be funny or anything like that. Like it's truly like a beautiful piece of music. It's not metal. It's not right. anything else. It's just right. You could tell. Like I, I guarantee Joel had everything to do with the song. I, I have no um, idea for a fact. But I'm just saying. When I listen to it, it's like everything I've heard about that guy and how he could like serenade people with his guitar. And you listen to this, right. it's like that's all you're doing, baby. Just serenading with this shit. Right. Uh. But yeah. Uh. I remember listening to Self Revolution for the first time, 
and how it it has typical you know guitar uh, you know guitar and drum and that, like the intensity that you think of when you think of Kill Switch, but then when it goes into the chorus, it has the big moment, the big chorus right. where it just turns into this huge soul. Uh, the 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 vocals go clean and they're just soaring through the 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 whole thing. Uh, listening to stuff like that, it's like that's what makes me love yeah. Kill Switch is that moment. And not that I'm like expecting it, but whenever it happens, it's like that's 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 what I want. Yeah, do more of that. But then obviously they're not going to always do that. I do, gonna... the, I do dig the pretty stuff in it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of like whenever I like whenever Deftones do like that one song, like you know, like the pretty one. Like, right. Yeah, they they always do intense stuff, but when they do the pretty one, it's like that's what I wanted. Thank you, Deftones. Right, so whenever right. I hear like the big moment in a Kill Switch song, it's like. That's what I fucking want. Thank you, Adam D. Thank you, Jess. You know, thank everybody for this shit. Right, right. Uh, so, hearing that out, out of Self Revolution, I was like, "Fuck yeah!" And then My Last Serenade. Ooh, uh, yeah. That is. A See, shit. I, I wonder, like, if if uh, if uh, Leech, yeah, um, the singer at the time, I wonder if he knew that was going to be his his last one. It's possible. You know, it's possible. I'm I'm sure it was at least built up in the back of his mind. Yeah. Um my last serenade was probably the the best one in my opinion of uh the singer on yeah. the first go round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I agree with you on that one. It, it has it has the intensity to it with the music. Right. It has like that depth to it. And I that, think it's but, probably the one that like really shot them up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they had the music video for it. It was oh, like yeah. probably, I think that might have been like their first big music video. Probably. Uh, got them on Uranium on oh, fucking yeah. the, the metal show with Julia. So, and oh it, yeah, Julia, man, total. Was it Julia C or something babe. like that? I'm not. I don't. I don't care. I just remember seeing the preview to Uranium where like she's like walking and like she's, you know, telling the camera to come in closer. She's taking off like a shirt and then she's taking off her other shirt. And then she's taking off her her uh, you know. Uh, muscle shirt, and then she's just left on her bra, and then she about to take it off, and then shh, you know, it goes See, all fuzzy. Just in case my girlfriend's listening to this episode, we need to change the subject. Exactly. Okay, we're not gonna so, talk uh, about. <laughs> <coughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, dude, my last serenade. I think that's pro- probably made him the most popular. Right. Absolutely. Uh, great. Great track. Um, <laughs> um, but like you were saying, the element of one is a beautiful one. Actually, um, I guess I'll go ahead and take the moment. All right. I I stepped on it, didn't I? You, no, you kind of did. You kind of did. All right. That's okay, though. Uh, yeah. Uh, we can Missy Elliott, you know. We can <laughs> flip it and reverse it. We'll do that. Uh, we're going to go... I guess my song that I would have to go with for this band will be The Element of One. Uh, but I guess I'm going to make it weird. I like The Element of One, and I like Jesse's doing it, but I like the way Howard does it a lot better. Oh. So... But listen to Jesse's version. We'll do that. All right. Element of One. <laughs> Thoughts? Thoughts? Because you said before we listened to it that you ne- you didn't hear the Howard version before. Yeah, that's true. The Howard version was great. I mean, you get the soaring, soulful vocals, man. It's you wanted like, to say the soulful black man. We'll, we'll get into that when we get into Howard. Okay. <laughs> um, I would have to say... By comparing this one to the... Better. Okay. Um, But we also watched the live version. Yeah. And that was kind of cool to see everybody rock out the way that they do. Yeah. And, you know, I think that Adam D looks like a, a fucking vampire. He does. With the uh, the sideburns and the cape. Yeah. Like, a, a specifically a Count Dracula. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Count Chocula. Actually, yes. Count Chocula. <laughs> yeah. A pasty white Count Chocula. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I really like that song because to me, like, it, it does everything that I want. Out of yeah. this, out of this band, it has the 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 the, the drive. It has the technical with the guitars and everything like that, and has screams. But once it gets to that chorus, it turns into like this big just wave of sound. Right, that's just so pleasing to me. Like it is, it's, it's it has good rhythm to it. Oh, it has yeah. good melody to it. Right. Uh, the vocals back and forth between the lead vocals and the backup vocals. Right, it all just it seems to just fit so well. And right. then once it gets to the hook, whenever it's the da, 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 da you know, I'm, yeah. uh, we'll go, uh, we'll be with you, you always. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
once it goes gets out of that part and goes into the last chorus, like I feel like it just blends right, right into right. it so well. Oh yeah, yeah. That it doesn't. You don't even think that this is coming from a metal band. You just think this is coming from like really, like a really great song that you would right. just you know you would hear on the radio. Like it just it doesn't feel like this is being outcast because right. in the metal world, like once you hear this, it's like why isn't this shit being more accepted? Right. That's just my opinion. I feel the same way with the song I'm about to, cho- or I'll choose to. Is it off this album, it. or are we going? It's, it's, on, it's on another album. Okay. Uh, so as, as we said, uh, due to some uh, some inner inner demons or, or bad feelings about himself, uh, Jesse uh, left the band. Right. Uh, so these guys, uh, they were they were they were terrified. They didn't know what to do. Because well, yeah. They, I mean, he just left off the cuff, man. Yeah, dude. He didn't say anything for a year, and then eventually he sent him an email. Yeah. You know, and that's that's pretty pretty terrible. They had to figure out what they were gonna do, and um, all I could say is I know that feeling. Anyways, <laughs> it was it, it really did kind of suck for them. Um, but they uh, they had somebody in mind, and uh, well, they, they they had tryouts. They had people come in. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it was it was it was funny to hear that the singer from All That Remains got that's like the, was. the close second. Which was funny right. because there was a time, and this is jumping far ahead, but like there was a time where their future singer had to go away because he had like a back injury or something like that. So they called in Phil yeah, yeah. from uh, All That Remains yeah. uh, to come and sing for them, where they, they uh, very appropriately dubbed the band Phil Switch Engage. <laughs> I'd have never thought of that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it was Phil Switch Engage. Um, I think that... Uh... I think that uh, he was one of those, uh, <coughs> Phil or whatever was yeah. saying, um, that he was like, you know what, Howard's got it. Yeah. Howard, Howard's above me on this, man, because he's, he's got it definitely a lot more down. And it's true, like, I whenever I think Kill Switch, I think Howard Jones. Yeah. You know, so when they did choose Howard Jones, I think it was one of their friends or another band or something yeah, yeah. like that, um, he was totally down for it, and... He brings about this awesome aura. Whenever right. he's on stage, you know, he's just kind of got his arms out all the time. Yeah. And really in the on the soulful side of those choruses is where he shines. Yeah. You know. I I, I think it was uh, I think it was probably Gary that said to us once was like when you listen to their music, like what where where is like his is where's he strongest at? Right. And it's, it's not the screaming. Right. His screaming is actually a little bit on the weaker side, but his right. but his vocals, his clean big vocals, are way more powerful. Right. Than anything else that he does. Right. And and it, and, and like I was gonna say, man, like I I hate to like make a big deal out of like race or anything or try to separate anybody from anything. Because you're scared of being called a racist. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want to be called a racist because I don't see myself as a racist. You're a fucking racist. I'm not Anyways, racist. Go ahead. Um, I, I do, it does make me smile to see somebody out of what you generally expect. You know, whenever, you know, we see people around here, it's easy to determine that, you know, um, they're the African Americans are more used to, you know, the hip hop crowd where Mm -hmm. they grow up out of funk, you know, out of stuff like that, Mm -hmm. you know, so to see a black person in, in metal is kind of a little bit like, Right on, you know what I mean. Like it, it does it make it, you want to cry? It me. It does. It does. It, it does show me that you know we are at that state of of mixing. You know what I mean. Like who we are shouldn't we shouldn't have those you know undertones or ideas that just because they're this color they're prone to this kind of lifestyle. You know what I mean. And to to see us evolve past that mm-hmm. is amazing to me. Mm-hmm. And to hear Howard on the vocals. So soulful, so he's he's a big old bald guy, man. He's he's, uh, big, he's a big old. I'll say it so because you don't want to. He's a big old bald black man that looks like a big black teddy bear that you just want to cuddle with. Right, reminds me of the singer of um, King's X in this in the in the side of vocals and uh-huh. the soulfulness. Yeah, you know, um, he really is to me what I think of whenever I think of Kill Switch Engage combination. Him a little bit of Adam D. Um, but doing further research and seeing the band and getting an idea of their personalities via documentaries and stuff like that, you know, everybody else has their spot of what makes this band what it is. Yeah, most definitely. Not to mention, uh, when Jesse left, we got Howard Jones. But not only did we get Howard Jones, we got the new drummer. 
Justin Foley, That's who, right. who, in my opinion, is one of the the leading factors with their songs and their music and just their songwriting. Uh, I'm sure you know it's, it has it's probably an equal. You know, everyone puts in their two yeah. cents or whatever. But I think what he adds to it is uh, he adds a lot of intensity and a lot of technicality right. and a lot of just like. A lot like that ooh factor, like whenever you listen to like a, a drum fill or something like that, you make, right. ooh. Would you say it's better drums than Adam D? Oh, m- most definitely. Most all definitely, right. I think. I think he's a phenomenal drummer. I think he's way more better, way think, better than I think that. it also put Adam D in the spot he needed to be, to be that show-off clown. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, I think that's what's fun about Kill Switch. You know, watching Adam D run around in the cape on the guitar, he wouldn't have been able to pull off the same shit yeah. behind the drums. Yeah, most definitely. You know? Most definitely. Um... So yeah, their next album with this new lineup, The End of Heartache, which was the big one for these guys. This was the huge one that got them out. It really uh, was. And I think it was, you know, there you know, you got When Darkness Falls. Starting off uh, with a bid farewell. Oh yeah, that was a huge uh huge entrance. Uh, like, you know, like the the music, you know, da 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 you know, like yeah, yeah. just the way it felt. It felt like it was if you saw it live, like that was gonna be huge. Yeah, that would be a good start off song. Uh, yeah. Of the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would say. Um, and then after that, you had Take This Oath, which I I told you the other right. day when we were listening to it that Jesse, the former singer, actually came in and did guest vocals on that yeah. song, which I thought was the coolest thing ever. It was like that they're still cool with each other. They're right. still friends. Uh, and then he came in and he was able to put in his, his two cents with it. And uh, right. I thought that was really awesome. And now I hear Howard as well is kind of introverted, kind of keeps to himself. Yeah, that, that was, that's well, I don't know. I guess whenever you, you I, th- I think they all kind of have their own little introvertedness because whenever you see them, it's like they don't, re- they, they do everything like together. Right. They don't really branch out too much. Like I think right. I remember I seeing a video of like them, their after party was like them getting drunk in the back of their bus together. Right. And that was it. Like, they weren't at, like, hanging out with other bands or anything like that. I think with Howard, whenever he's on stage, he really shows his true colors. I I didn't mean to say that. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, his, his true... All this, right. I'm not so, a racist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you're absolutely right. He he, he, uh, he, he, lets, he lets his... Uh, he, he lets it all out on stage, which I think is the way it's supposed to right. be. Right. Uh, other songs like we were talking about Rose of Sharon, Rose which of is Sharon. which is the song that we we tried playing back in the day, and that's a really good song. It has a really great music video, uh, right? And then End of Heartache, which End was Heart- which was the big one that got on the soundtracks and had their there was the, probably like their next biggest music video that they had. Uh, and they have a clean version, and then they have the heavy version of this where it's not so much screaming. No, oh, wow, I didn't. And in that, yeah, yeah, uh, which I think. That's why that's kind of how popular they were getting that they had like that radio, radio track, yeah. radio track, so that could, more people could listen to it, right? And not be so shunned. I think of I the like the ones with the more screaming. Well, yeah, of course, everybody's gonna love. I mean, any metalhead's gonna love that. But if you want, yeah. your, you know, the listeners and to branch out into new people's ears, you kind of gotta kind of tame it down a little bit, right? And they did that with a few of their songs too. Oh yeah, they did the, that. The radio but, edit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really like this album a lot. Probably because of um, we were talking about. You were saying if you went back to your notes, you'd you'd know this. You wouldn't need me to remind you. But we're talking about love metal. Yeah. Uh, you this say was, this was that album. This was that album that for me I felt that the most. Yeah. Uh, not so much. Maybe, well, maybe maybe a few other ones. But I think it's because of Howard. I think it's the way he sings. I think it's some of the lyrics that he goes right. with. I think it's just the overall feeling. Uh, and then yeah, end of heartache. I can I can easily just remember seeing like the emo kids in high school, right? Like loving the song so much. That was another one of the songs I learned on guitar. Yeah, yeah. That was that was that was. I don't know. It's just something lyrically about hearing someone talk about you know broken heart, broken hearts, and you know all this sort of other stuff that you know that uh, pulls on the heartstrings a bit. Right. You know, I, I think I think it did the right thing. It was, it was a good song for the chicks. You know, because oh, yeah, the, yeah. the the chicks need songs to rock out to as well. Panty dropper, exactly. Every band's got to have the panty dropper. Oh, great, great album. Because if not, there'd just be a whole bunch of dudes at your show. I, I, I hate to go any further, but I'd like to say that this album really did stem out to the next one very well. Yeah, and I think that it was a similar sound, but at the same time, it's a way different album. You know what I mean? Are we ready to go into it? Uh, I mean, unless there's any songs on here that you want to do, like, shout-outs. You mentioned, you've mentioned them all. 
Well, I didn't mention all of them. I mean, fucking... Uh, well, oh, oh, when Darkness Falls. Oh, okay, yeah. Then you got Declaration, which fucking goes fast and speedy, and it's, it has, like, really good dark notes in it that sound fucking right. amazing. Uh, Wasted Sacrifice, which is another one of those, like, really pretty instrumental songs that you kind of don't expect. Which is the one with Breathe Life? That's this one. This one? Yeah. Okay. Breathe Life is another beautiful song. Yeah. Uh, it starts off with, like, this sick-ass drum roll, and then it goes in, like... It has, like, so many levels to it, because it has, like, that sick drum roll, and then it's the... You know, then it goes from that into, like, like the... the uh, I don't know. It has, like, so many... Uh, there's so many fucking parts. There's so many changes in that damn song. Another thing I like about Kill Switch is, like, it's got its, it's, got its screams, and it's got its soaring vocals, but in between, in the verses, they've just got, like, those... Those shouting voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, it's uh, it's talking. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not actually singing, and that's kind of another thing that creates that element of what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, a certain certain dynamic, certain style, and, and uh, I kind of dig that about them as well. For sure. Uh, okay, I guess if there's nothing else on this album you want to go into, we can go into the next one. The only album I've been jamming in my car, because that's the only one I actually physically have. <laughs> um, As Daylight Dies. Uh, which I believe I got a burnt copy from you back in the day. Um, and it has one of the most powerful songs I've ever heard in my life. Most powerful song, uh, Desperate Times. Yes. Uh, the the feeling of the guitar, it was like... It's slow-paced, but at the same time, there's so much feeling and so much... Of a pull. Like, it is the most powerful song I've ever heard in my life. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. I'd say with the, what I think of whenever I think power. Yeah. This is strength and emotion, just pulling on them hard strings like they're fucking guitar strings. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, at the same pace. You know what I mean? It's it's just so emotional. That is uh, one of my favorite songs on this album, uh, as well as um, the band. Okay. All together. Uh, this song, I mean, this album, uh, this was a very, this was one of the important ones for me because uh, this was, obviously, I mean, for me, this is an album that I could listen to every single track. Right. You know, top to bottom, I could listen right. to every single one. I don't think there's any songs that I ever skip off It's all album. solid. Yeah. It's all fucking solid. And you get a little bit of everything on every track. Yeah. Uh, I remember uh, Gary coming over to my house and... We were just hanging out or whatever, and and the CD had just came out. I think I burned it, and I was like, "Hey, you want to check out the new Kill Switch album?" And uh, he was like, "Yeah, let's let's go out to my car and let's listen to it." So we sat in his car. I think, and it was like probably like this weather. Like it was well, it was colder back then. But so we were in the car with the heater on, listening to this album from track one all the way to the very, very last track together. Yeah, sort of like listen. I don't think I listened to all of it. I think I probably listened to my curse. And whoa, like, whoa, whoa! Now you're stepping on my. Well, song. hold on, hold on, a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. <laughs> I, well, it's not stepping on your song. That was the single that they released that everybody heard. Yeah. Uh, so I heard that one. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get that one. And whenever I would get the new songs, I would listen to maybe like five seconds of it just to make sure like that the song worked that it downloaded right. Right, right. And then I would just be like, okay, next one. So I would not really listen to it. I would just like listen to the beginning, right, right, just right. to know that it was the right band. Uh, because that was the troubles back then. You could click on something to download it and next thing you know it's fucking something different all right, all right. Um, so yeah we listened to the whole thing together and like that was one of those like inspiring moments because like we we heard these songs and we're like this is the type of shit we should be doing this is the type of shit we should be writing and playing and jamming out to you know Yeah. Uh, which I think had a huge hand in like the songs that we were writing certainly so for me that was awesome for me that was like a really cool moment where I felt inspired yeah and uh yeah, this, the, uh, every every song on this on this track uh, did something for me. So, oh yeah, I, I love this album. It's one of my I've had it on repeat for a while now. Yeah. Um. So my curse. Yes. My curse is my song, and uh, I'm sticking to it. Yep. Um. This is a track that uh. Probably one of the most beautiful. Probably also the most poppy of their stuff. Mm-hmm. Most. Uh, most known probably uh, yeah. if it, if maybe not my last serenade yeah but it's also one that sticks out and that's it's one that uh, 
uh, we put on the kids' iPods. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and and you know they dig it. The clean version or the or the uh, screaming because there's two versions of this one as well. Right, there's right. The clean, there's the, where I they... think it's the clean version, but I prefer the screaming version. The, the non-radio. I'm not version. asking what you prefer. I'm asking what you gave kids. I, I told you it was a clean version. Okay, then. That's all I fucking asked. Hey, man. Hey, man. I'm trying to run a podcast here. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, man. I guess we'll go uh, straight into it then. All right. My curse. You know what's funny is as soon as I heard that song, this is the first, song I, first time I've heard that song in a real long time. First time I heard, when, when you first started playing that, all I could think of, and this is really going to date back to fucking the times but every time I'd click on like an emo chicks page on MySpace yeah and they had the profile <laughs> song and whenever I'd find a chick that had my curse on and she was like a total babe and she had like the swoop haircut and like she had like the huge heavy eye shadow right and I was like man now I just want somebody with a brain that's all I want I don't care about that's anybody. all you need bro but uh no yeah uh this this song it's a song for the ladies it's yeah. a song for the chicks. But I'm sure there's plenty you know, of dudes that can relate to this shit. I would have to say that it's probably one of the best, like, songs for somebody who's not listened to Kill Switch. To really, uh, really beginner, especially if you're not real into metal. Right. If you're not real into metal, it's probably the best beginner track. Right. You know, so you, you know, kind of shows you what elements there are, and, and it's a little bit easier, especially the radio version. Yeah. Um... We listen to the radio version versus the other one that I was talking about. And, like, there are certain aspects of it, like, where it's usually screaming and he's singing it out. And it's like, I'm so used to that one version. Yeah. Like, the first time. Yeah, I you know, when we were listening the, to it and I heard him singing instead of screaming, I was like, wait a second, man. What is this shit? Yeah. For the music video, it's uh, it's radio version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, absolutely good track. Were there any other songs on this besides... Uh Oh, you know, like like you were saying, it's one of those that you can really jam the whole thing out. Yeah. And so the fact that I've got it on disc versus Spotify kind of changes my perception of uh, knowing the track title. You know, I just play through it and I feel it all. Uh-huh. And there's not any that really particularly stand out versus the other tracks mm-hmm. other than Desperate Times and uh, My Curse. Arms of Sorrow is a really great song to me. I feel like that one does... Kind of like what uh, Desperate Times did for me, where it's like it has like a really great emotion to it, really great power yeah. to it. Uh, for the longest time, I thought that it was one of the most like crazy, complicated songs to play. And I remember uh, Gary had once said to me, it was like, man, we should learn how to play the song. And I was like, I don't know, man. It seems a little too uh, far out for me, you know, right. as far as my abilities go. And this is before, you know, I was like, this is when I was way hesitant trying anything because I was like, ah, I can't play that shit. Right. Know? But um, I just remember thinking, there's no way I could play that shit. And then I remember recently watching a video of them play it live right. and watching what he was doing. And I was like, that's really not that tricky. That's not that difficult like I thought it was. So I could probably do it now. Yeah, probably, man. <laughs> but no, that, that's another. If I didn't pick uh, Element of One, I would have gone with Arms of Sorrow. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that was my very close second. Okay. But, uh, that works, man. Anyways, on keeping things going. Uh, after that, they came out with their second self-titled album, which who the fuck does two self-titled albums? Uh, did Deftones do that? No, no they, they didn't. didn't. Corn did that. Who the fuck, man? No, Corn did an untitled and a self-titled <laughs> What the fuck is with musicians? Anyways, uh, yeah, this album came out, and I remember being real excited about this album because it coming off of right after... Uh, uh, I think it shows laziness, right? Really. Well, hold on. Dude, what? <laughs> uh, coming after As uh, Daylight Dies, uh, we, were, we were really excited to, to find out what was going to happen next uh, after that because that, for us, that was a huge album. And I remember... Uh, our guitarist Nikolai, he had gotten a hold of it. Right. Uh, he had downloaded it or something like that. And I remember listening to it with him. And I remember the first song I listened to, I was like, is this Kill Switch? Right. Because it kind of sounded different. It wasn't what I was expecting. Uh, and then he, we were like, yeah, this this is totally them. This is their new album. Right. And I was like, okay. I don't know what to expect here. 
And then, uh, but I did find uh, Starting Over to be a really great song. Starting Over is a really fantastic track. It kind of keeps in the same vibe as their, as the songs that we talk a lot about, right. where it has like the big power and has like that drive to it. Uh, really beautiful chorus. Uh, and then after that, and then uh, A Light in a Darkened World kind of has back to like their power ballad type stuff where it's very like just driving and powerful and then the licks are really kind of do 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 you know like kind of doing that whole thing um other than that though man you know i i just saw it as one of those that every song kind of blended together and nothing really stuck out for me yeah yeah which that's not a bad thing not a bad thing at all it just depends on if that's your mood you know that's your time for the you're, moment, you're, you're you know. getting what you're getting the things that they can do really well out of this song where it comes right. in with powerful vocals right. really heavy drums really heavy guitars very good licks um holy shit take it back take it back real quick to uh as daylight dies we didn't even talk about holy diver that was on as daylight dies or yeah. was that on the bonus no well it's still as daylight dies oh we didn't talk about Holy Diver. I never liked Holy Diver. Okay, then fuck that then. Anyways. <laughs> it's up to you, man. Okay, you okay, real quick. It. Okay, because I, I don't have a lot of more time to be on the show, but uh, fucking Holy Diver. They did a cover of Dio's song, Holy Diver, and it blew up. Right. Like, real big. It, it really blew them up to be like, this is that band. They fucking covered one of the Metal God's greatest songs, and they fucking owned it. They, they made it their own. And the fucking guitar solos were way sicker in this one, in my opinion. It had like the the do 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 that that the that the main that the original one had, but it just felt like it felt better. Right. Uh, I don't know. It it had the silliness that you expect from Kill Switch, like because we talked about how like they like to have fun. Uh, you kind of hear it in in the music. You hear like they they sound like they're just having so much fun. And, right. Uh, I don't know. I mean, whether you like the song or not, which I, I don't. Right. It, it doesn't matter if you do or if you don't. It, 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 it's it was what kind of blew them up a little bit more. Yeah. But when you think about like Kill Switch and being like that fun metal band, right? The fact that they covered Dio, especially in a time where like Pick of Destiny by uh, Tenacious yeah. D and all this stuff were coming Dio out, was getting some recognition where, right before he passed. Where metal was becoming fun. Yeah. It wasn't serious anymore. It was like real jokey fun. Right. You have a good time. Well, I think it reinstated that they're a metal band. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Anyways, uh, back to second self-titled of Kill Switch. Uh, but listening to this again when we were about to do this show, uh, I did find that there were a few songs on there that I really liked. There's there's one song on there where uh, Howard's like legit singing throughout a majority of it. I want to say it was called uh, The Return. It was very slow, and he's singing. Like, not a lot of screaming, if any. I don't remember. Right. But he was just like, I don't know. I hear stories about how Howard was kind of, he was starting to turn into Jesse, where he was kind of getting depressed. Yeah. During this time period, where he wasn't really doing a lot of shows anymore. Right. And then the whole Phil Switch thing happened, and you're starting to think, like, was he really, did he, I mean... I understand, like, he, I think he had, like, a back injury that he had to go out for, but was that it? You know, did he really even want to still do it after that? Right. So, hearing these songs, you kind of hear it. That it, there's not a whole lot being put into it <laughs> yeah, on yeah. his end. Well, not that, because he, there's songs to hear that he really, he, he does his thing. It's just him being in it as far as wanting to be, wanting to continue being in this really popular metal band. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, and just like how Jesse had My Last Serenade, I think Howard also had This Is Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, listening to that song. As soon as I saw that track title and knowing what I kind of know, I was like, is that is that the one? Is that him trying to get his last word in? Mm-hmm. And I heard it. I was like, I, I, I think that is. Right. I feel like that's probably his, his way of uh, saying, I'm, I'm done with this. Uh, still a really beautiful song, though. Kind of like David Bowie with uh, that Black Star album. Could be. You know, Could be. he knows it's the end. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, like we're saying, like there's good songs on here. We don't want to shoot it down as it's a bad album. If you want to check it out, please do. But when you're coming off of like an album like As Daylight Dies and right. And a Heartache, and then you hear this one, it just kind of can be a bummer. It, yeah, it kind of can, can you know because you're you're expecting a little bit more, uh, not as many hits, right? Uh, and again, that's that's when uh, 
that's when Howard left, and I think he did it pretty abruptly as well. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure the reasons why Howard left. I'm pretty sure it had to do with him just not wanting to do it anymore. Right. I think I think road life and then that the popularity kind of got to him. Yeah. And I will have to say that they asked Jesse to join again. Yeah. Uh, and he denied. He was like, I don't want to do it. Um, and then, you know, they started tryouts. He was like, you know what? At the very least, I got to give it a shot. He was, he was working in a bar at the time and still, you know, with another band at the time. And he was like, you know, at the very least, you know, I at least have to give it some sort of shot. And so, you know, he didn't just immediately get in the band. He did the tryouts and uh-huh. obviously he succeeded. And that's where we get our next album. Uh-huh. Disarm the Descent. Yes. And uh, I was very skeptical about knowing that he came back because I like the Jesse stuff. Right. But like we were saying, whenever we think of Kill Switch, we think of Howard Jones. Right. And I don't want to seem like we're riding uh, Howard Jones' big black dick right now. But for some reason, knowing that Jesse was going to come back, it was like, are we just going to get the old stuff again? Is that what we're going to get? We Um, didn't. No, no, there's there's a lot of great... There's, it seems like he knows what he's doing a little bit better now. He's got technique under control, yeah. you know, and I'm sure I would be skeptical in general just because having a singer that was in the band that left and didn't say shit, yeah. you know, I mean, it would it was totally rational to be like, I don't know, are we going to get fucked again? You know yeah. what I mean? Are we going to be put in that position again? You know, are we going to get stuck? Um, but, um, you know, he... He really kind of proved himself, you know, I mean, to be in the vocal spot as long as he has this yeah. next come, you know, this next go round. Yeah. Uh, on this album, there's only one album that really stuck with me, but I'd say that the album was really heavy, uh, really hard, oh, um, yeah. kind of like the older stuff, uh, just cleaner. Yeah. You know, more, you know, tight in places it needed to be. And uh, you got to give a lot of props to Adam D as a music producer which is just another notch on his belt of all the things that he can do because a lot of, if not every album since End of Heartache and on, he produced. Right. And uh, he's even gone on to produce other bands like Under Roth and then a few right. other metal bands that he's he's really uh, put his hand on. So I think he's got the ear. I think he's got the ear for music. So Absolutely, yeah. So whenever you hear the music and the mixing and how everything sounds together, Right. I know that Adam knows exactly what he's doing. A lot of things, he's kind of a perfect rock star just because he's got the personality for it. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, um, anybody should check out Adam D on The Price is Right, which oh, yeah. he won fucking everything yeah, there is yeah, to yeah, win. Yeah. Like two cars, uh, fucking shitload of money, yeah. and cruises and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he didn't mention that he was in Kill Switch. He was just like his happy-go-lucky fucking sm- smiling like a douchebag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the whole time, and it was... It's definitely entertaining to watch. It's on YouTube. Most definitely, yeah. Um, but um, that personality and the skill that he has. Um, on um, on this album, there's one song that stuck out to me. Um, I wasn't really, whenever I first listened to it, I wasn't really paying attention to the albums. Um, you mean the song titles? Uh, no, I wasn't I wasn't paying attention to the albums. I just downloaded Kill oh, Switch right, Engage right. at the okay. time. You're right. And uh, I very well thought it was Howard. I didn't know any better. I didn't know if it was any other singer. Uh, but the song is called In Due Time. Yeah. And uh, I think that the guitars fucking do it for me on that song. Just mm-hmm. like the fast, like, the way it, the guitars are strummed a certain way, it's just like, that is metal. That is what I want to hear. That's going to get me in the mood to fucking destroy. Right. You know. And by destroy, I'm talking about in the bedroom. Ooh. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Um, yeah, man. Um, that song uh, meant a lot for me. Um, I That's really the only one that really stuck out. But I can tell you right now, that whole album was uh, an upgrade from the uh, the last one. Yeah, yeah. One. I, I, I agree. I think it, it felt like it had life in it again as far as just like the intensity, the the drive, you know, and something that I think Jesse brought back from the previous stuff was that a lot of his lyrics, a lot of the stuff that he writes about are, are always supposed to be about like uplifting, about always supposed to be, you know, not so corny and motivational. You can do it, you know, but very, you know, just like trying to, to, to light that fire inside of you and just give you hope. I right. think hope has always been a huge, like a uh, theme for his songs. Certainly. And you kind of get that with, uh, 
you know, some of these songs. If anything, you look at the song titles and like some of these song titles are very much like new awakening, yeah. you know, turning point, you know, like you, it, it's a lot more obvious on the next. So like, what is this hate breed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, he did a lot of that. And when he was in the band in the, the first two albums, like very just giving the listener hope, which right. is something that I think he always wanted to do. I think Howard was still doing that thing, but I think he was getting creative with like his lovey stuff and like, you know, the stuff yeah. that he was writing about. But yeah. Jesse was very hopeful. And I think maybe right. that comes with like kind of where it digs in a little deeper with like his uh, his emotions or whatever. You know, you want to write about stuff that's a little bit more optimistic, so not so not so sad and all that right. stuff. But anyways, after that, uh, they released their most recent album, Incarnate. Uh, same feel. Yeah. You know, I think it's the exact same feel for me with this one. Is it's It's got a lot of life to it. It's got a lot of drive. Right. Uh, you know, I think I think these guys, they're just they're just going. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even know if they're worried or if they're even thinking about, like, popularity or, like, getting as big as they were before with, like, in a heartache and as daylight dies. I think they're just going forward. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a lot of what I like about this band is, like, they just fucking, they just go. You know, they're going to do shows. They're going to write albums. They're going to fucking just rock out as hard as they humanly can. Right. And they may not be the headliner anymore like they used to be, but fuck it. They got so many great, they have so much talent. They have so many great hits that the audience is obviously going to love anything that they it's do. Re- it's remarkable, really, the talent that they have. Yeah. You know, um, I again, like, this is another album that, like, nothing specifically stuck out. It's just the whole thing is good. You know, it's just, it, it. it's one of those things you want to play in the background, put you in a specific spot in your mind. Yeah. You know, um, it seems like every album just gets progressively better um, for the most part. Definitely. Um, Very excited to see where they go with after this one. I mean, obviously, this just came out. Right. You know what I mean? I, I, who knows where they go after this? But every time they put it out an album and I listen to it and I think it sounds great, I, I don't think there's any bad album. Even the self-titled one, the second self-titled one. I think right. it's, I think that's a great album. But uh, they the have, first self-titled one. Yeah. Uh, even, yeah. I don't think they've come out with anything bad yet. I just think that they're constantly growing, they're constantly progressing, they're constantly going forward. I don't think I think they have their bag of tricks. I think they have their what their go tos with like their certain licks and their rhythms. But I think and the drummer Justin he always has like his his fills that sound awfully familiar. But I think they constantly just sort of push themselves as far as like rhythms and time signatures right. and like just where they they go with their songs. And I'm very curious with where they go with next. Um. Because sometimes whenever you listen to this stuff, it sounds like it's becoming a little bit, a uh, little, little modern, like what you're hearing nowadays with music, where at least with metal, how it's all screamy and all like blast beats and all like just like super duper riffs. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I'm just curious, like, are they gonna follow the times? Or are they gonna ever branch out and like kind of go back to that original like metal core? You know, you know I'd I- like to, I'd like to hear something more in the field of as daylight dies or uh, end of heartache. Is what I'd like, but that's kind of a personal bias. Yeah, because those are the tracks that I dig. You know what I mean? Um, I don't think that they'll probably get Howard back. Yeah, uh, but definitely uh, one of the um, one of the styles that I liked most. And I mean, it seems like uh, Jesse's getting his his stuff down as far as most that. definitely. And I, and I like I said, I can't wait to see where it goes. Right, most definitely. But I guess that's the end of the road as far as their where they are. Uh, they got they're still doing shows. I think they're on tour in like England right now. So oh, that's a band I'd love to see. Yeah, I, I know. Oh, Gary saw them, but that was during Phil Switch, so he didn't get to see how. That would have been nice. It would have been. And I, if, if they ever do like a ten year anniversary for like Anna Hardik or as Daylight Dies, and they bring back Howard, that would be fucking sweet. Who knows if they'll do it, anyways? But it would be cool if they did. All right. Um. Anyways, I guess we can go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, we have time for my segment. <sighs> go ahead, dude. All right. Uh, we'll do the segment. We'll we'll close it out on that. All right, that sounds good. All right, this week on uh, John's Weird Music, um, I've got a band that's starting to get recognized um, where they're at. I've been listening to them for about a year. Um, It's uh, been recognized as the world's only nettle band. Nettle? Nettle. 
because everybody in the band is dressed as Ned Flanders. Oh my fucking god! I know exactly who this is. Yeah. Um, they started about two years ago. Um, every lyric in the band uh, is quotes that Ned Flanders has said on The Simpsons. They're being recognized by Billboard, Time Magazine, uh, The Independent, BBC, Esquire, Vice. Um, I've I actually dig their music. Mm-hmm. And um, there's there's a few songs that I particularly dig. Um, White Wine Spritzer, Nothing at All, Press Destruct Button, They Warn Me, All That Is Left. Uh, they're from Arizona, and uh, I really like uh, the kind of style that they have. I um, also like concepts, uh-huh. you know what I mean? Um, they're, they say that they're not as fast as Bart Core, and they're cleaner than Krusty Punk. So, uh, I mean, that's completely notable um from phoenix arizona this band is called oakley dokley and uh they've got their uh album that came out this uh this year howdly doodly so uh i'm gonna go ahead and we we actually got permission to play their music so i'm gonna go ahead and play uh white wine spritzer all right Yeah. 